Hi, how you doing? Um, excuse me as I take off my square eyeballs, if that's all right. I had to put my glasses on to see what I was doing on the screen. About a week or so ago, I, I posted a little uh, rambling video about the recent ad campaign in our in our city uh, from the Mormon Church, where they show uh, these ads of normal-looking people, cool people, you know, nice people. And at the end of the ad, they'll say, "My name is such and such, and I'm a Mormon." And uh, I made some comments about that. The videos or the the commercials really pretty good and and you know Mormon people are, are good people they're uh, family oriented moral people uh, conservative or at least well some of the folks in the commercials don't look too conservative but it's not about those people I, I, I had a number of responses and I've been kind of going back and forth with a fellow uh, email about different issues. I made the statement about uh, Glenn Beck. They had the rally down in Washington, D.C. And and uh, he said that the nation has to get back to God. And the comment I made was, and I'm going to make again, is that the, the Mormon God is not the God of Christianity. Now, the Mormons will tell you that Joseph Smith, upon discovering uh, some golden plates in a mountain or in a hill in New York State, plates that were written in a mysterious language called Reformed Hieroglyphics, which nobody had ever heard of. Joseph Smith discovered these plates and was given some magic glasses because Joseph, Joseph Smith never had training in ancient languages or interpretation or translation. So uh, the angel Moroni had to give him some magic glasses that he could read these golden plates and translate them into the Book of Mormon. And then he received other revelations as a prophet of God. And we have books called uh, Pearl of Great Price and Doctrine and Covenants and so forth. And they set forth the doctrine of the Mormons coming out of the, the mind of, or the, the mouth of Joseph Smith. The Book of Mormon has no archaeological support. Oh, they claim there's some, but in reality, there's there's none. There's no historical evidence of the existence of these peoples that supposedly lived on this continent uh, 1,800 or 1,600 years ago and before that. In fact, recent evidence, uh, DNA evidence, links the American Indian not with Semitic people but with Asian people. Anyway, out of this Book of Mormon and these Doctrine and Covenants and Pearl of Great Price, a lot of doctrines have come. And, and, and the, the doctrine that I have, uh, well, I have a lot of problem with a lot of their doctrines. But, of course, the one, the bottom line is the, the person of God and the deity of Jesus Christ. And isn't it interesting that every cult denies the deity of Jesus Christ? Christianity, true Christianity, biblical Christianity, confirms that Jesus, the eternal Son of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, all eternally existent, all eternally powerful, all working in perfect conjunction with each other, together, one God and three persons. And I've gone back and forth with the fellow who's been writing me about that and uh, that's the God I worship. That's the God of the Bible. The Mormon God was actually uh, at one time a sinner on another planet, I guess in another universe, from what I understand, from what I've read, and from what this fellow has told me. He's, he's sent me a lot of kind of cut and paste, what he calls scholarly documents about God. And they believe that, that their God was once a sinner on another planet in another universe who worked his way into an exalted position. I guess he was a good Mormon on that planet in that universe. And so now he is God of this planet. And Jesus is a created 
lesser God, very similar to the teaching of the ancient Gnostics, that there were emanations. There was uh, from one God to the next, he created an inferior God and an inferior God and so forth. And uh, they believe that Jesus Christ and Lucifer were spirit brothers. Now see, when when they when they come knocking on the door or when you request information, I don't know how much of this they really tell their their people or their potential converts. Uh, I do know they tell the story of Joseph Smith and him finding the plates and uh, and so forth and how they they believe that they are restoring the real gospel. But in truth, what they're restoring is a false gospel, and it's really not new at all. It's been around for. It goes back to the Garden of Eden when when Satan told Eve, you know, God doesn't want you to eat of that fruit because He knows that when you do, you're going to be like Him. He called God a liar. That's what Joseph Smith has done. He's called God a liar. He's got, I guess, about 11 million people believing him. And from the looks of this ad campaign, they're trying to get more. You know, they want more. I hope that uh, if you're a Mormon and you're watching this, you know, you're probably, I'm probably making you mad. I'm sorry, I don't want to make anybody mad. But the Bible tells us to try the spirits. It tells us to check out everything we hear. And I would encourage people, you know, if you hear me say something on here, get a Bible and see what I have to say, you know, see if what I'm saying is right or wrong. You have to check everything that we hear. So if you're a Mormon out there, you're probably mad at me. I don't want you to be mad at me. You know, Consider your options. You're not going to work your way into God's presence. You're not going to work your way into heaven. You're not going to work your way into Godhood. You'll work your way straight to hell. That's for Mormons, Jehovah's Witnesses, or anybody else that thinks they can be good enough to have God accept them into his presence. He never will. If you're out there and, and you're, you really don't know what to believe, I would encourage you to get yourself a King James Bible, one without footnotes, and pray and say, God, if you're real, please reveal this to me. And open up to the book of John. Read it. Read uh, Matthew's Gospel. Read Paul's letter to the church at Rome, Romans, the most doctrinally complete book in, in the New Testament, one of the most doctrinally complete books in the New Testament. And learn about God from his word. I, uh, you know, sure don't want to make anybody mad, but I have to live by the truth. Jesus said, my word is truth. So I encourage you, get a copy of God's word. Book of Mormon, it's a fantasy of Joseph Smith. He made it up. It's all make-believe. Get a Bible, read it, study it, pray and I believe if you're really sincerely seeking God, He'll show you who He is. He'll show you. And it's not with the warm burning in the bosom. You know, that's the Mormons use that. Where if you get this, you know, warm fuzzy feeling inside, God can give you that. He He can He can give you that. You know, that emotional type feeling. That's wonderful to have that. But it's it's not so much what you feel. It's what God's Word says. Read it. Pray about it. Study it. Well, I'm going to quit because my wife will be coming home pretty soon. If she comes home and hears me talking to myself, she'll probably think I'm crazy. Some of you probably do too. That's okay. God bless you. And uh, seek the truth. If you knock, the door will be open. If you seek, you'll find. If you ask, he's going to answer. God bless you.